we have heard and what we've seen are the scenes from Iran of the parliamentarians in Iran cheering what's happened, the fireworks being set off in celebration of, of what Hamas has done and reports coming out last night, and I, I don't know if they're verified, that Iran played some role uh, in uh, making a cyber attack yeah. in order to facilitate... Um, it's reported that Iran, the Revolutionary yeah. Guard, had some role in the planning of, of yeah. all of this. Uh, and a cyber attack as well, which meant that uh, uh, Israel was, you know, the security that Israel was caught off guard. So it, this, this, this spans far greater than the Israel-Palestinian conflict. This is about kind of a wider fight for peace in the whole of the Middle East. Look, I mean, first of all, I don't know, how do you describe the awfulness of what just happened? I, I mean, I can't put it into words. I, it, it has been shocking. It's uh, the scenes that are coming out of there are awful. Both Luciana and I visited this year um, a kibbutz on the border of uh, Gaza and Israel. And what was so, for me, I hadn't been to Israel for many years, what for me was so powerful was that as you stood on the uh, boundary of the kibbutz, you could hear the calling to prayer from uh, the Gaza side of the, uh, of the border. That, that kibbutz is currently occupied. Um, when we were there, it's not a very rich kibbutz. The housing is not a very good quality. Every home is covered to prevent it being, uh, you know, the, the, because they're used to bombing. So it's just when you've got that personal connection, and I haven't got the, some, Luciano's got relatives and friends there as well. We've all got friends there. It's just horrific. It's yeah. horrific. And you have friends and, and family there? Yeah, I have family members. I have people that are being called up to serve um, reservists that... Um, in the wake of the barbaric, horrific acts that we've seen, um, most I remember I was I, I was in tears looking at the images of the people fleeing the peace music festival. Yes. And then we've heard just last night they've recovered 160 bodies yes. from that event alone. Uh, and seeing, I appreciate that you know for broadcasters, some of the images are so horrific they're unable to broadcast them. Obviously lots of additional footage has been circulated that was being posted on TikTok by uh, the Hamas terrorists that we've seen of people being beheaded and paraded through and their bodies pulled through the streets of Gaza. The most horrific scenes of babies and toddlers in cages that have been taken hostage and taken into Gaza. I mean, I've never seen anything like it in my life. And mm. we learned that on Saturday, Israel lost the greatest number of Jews since the end of the Holocaust. I mean, these events are just unfathomable. Yeah, I mean, I mean the savagery of the attack and the atrocities that you, you describe. I mean, whenever it comes to an, an incident like this with, with many dead, you wonder what, what motivates, what do people imagine they're going to gain from this? But when you see the horrors that we're seeing in Gaza now, I mean, what possible gain? How could it be anything but counterproductive to the cause they say they're serving. Well, one of the things I felt when I went there earlier this year is you come out thinking politics is completely broken in Israel at the moment. Um, I mean, the Palestinian Authority has no nowhere to go. Uh, within Israel itself, the left is totally disorganized and can't get its act together. Netanyahu, who's made this alliance with the extreme right, um, and, you know, their, their whole whole ethos was provoking an attack mm. so that all of politics is so broken which is why when I came back I thought really the only hope for a future two-state solution which is at the moment you know a, a wild dream rather than a near reality is for external intervention so it's if we get a strong brave American president who will um, you know, fight to bring the two sides together. It's that sort of intervention. Mm. And the other thing I just do feel, which uh, uh, is really important, is that all of us outside have to make our voices heard. And we have to put, put what help we can into building those sort of grassroots resources that bring the two, two communities together. Mm. Um, in the end, it's only by negotiation mm. that you'll create I mean, peace. Uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is massing troops and tanks yeah. on the border of Gaza. Um, Warplanes are expected to go in, reinforced by American warplanes and, and an American aircraft carrier. Are you concerned there may be, I don't know, an overreaction? I'm, I'm concerned about, I mean, you, you, you asked a minute ago, like, what was the motivation? And this is not 
Hamas acting alone. And it is an organisation, a terrorist organisation, that since its inception in 1988 um, has had at its core the aim of destroying Israel. That's what it believes in. But what we have heard and what we've seen are the scenes from Iran of the parliamentarians in Iran cheering what's happened, the fireworks being set off in celebration of, of what Hamas has done, and reports coming out last night, and I, I don't know if they're verified, that Iran played some role uh, in uh, making a cyber attack in order to facilitate... Um, it's reported that, that Iran, the Revolutionary Guard, had some role in the planning of, of yeah. all of this. And a cyber attack as well, which meant that uh, uh, Israel was, you know, the security that Israel was caught off guard. So this 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 spans far greater than the Israel-Palestinian conflict. This is about kind of a wider fight for peace in the whole of the Middle East, and particularly at the brink where you know we we saw and we've seen that Israel was on the cusp of signing an accord uh, with Saudi Arabia, the um, Abraham Accords, which would have normalised relations for the first time with Saudi Arabia. There's far greater things at play here mm. than just what's going on mm. between Israel mm. and its Palestinians. It suggested the attack may have been in part an attempt to disrupt that Saudi-Israeli Israeli accord. But now the... But coming back to your quote, I mean, I do think Israel has the right to defend itself. Yeah. And um, uh, those that, you know, obviously what what happens in the sh short term will be utterly horrific, but the fighting will stop. And then we've got to think about how we start building uh, the peace in the long term. When the, the IDF go in, when the, 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 the planes go in, start bombing and sending in missiles, the troops start firing, the tanks start firing, there will be quite possibly a huge number of civilian casualties in Gaza, of Palestinians. Does that concern you? Because that, that could inflame the situation arguably far more. What's the old, you know, it is sort of where, where's your alternative? Of course it concerns me. Uh, and all war has is purposeless. All it does it, it ends in killing and death. But in the current, where we are today, Israel must defend itself. As Luciana said, this is the greatest number of people, civilians, mm. civilians, who have been killed since the Holocaust. Mm. And um, you're... That, that demands a reaction. Mm. Okay, the difficulty, let's get through, when we get through that, is how you then try and build. I mean, I think we're all a bit culpable. All of us are culpable because, you know, particularly over the recent times when it was clear that tensions were rising in, in, in the area. That's been clear for the last couple of years. Mm. Um, the international community were not doing a lot, which is why I think the only way that you can start resolving and bringing the two sides together is by a strong response from friends of Israel. Uh, you know, and what can look, Joe Biden is the obvious name that springs to yeah. mind. What what do you hope for from Joe Biden? He he has he's hoped to make progress and bring sides together. He hasn't made much progress. What can he do now that he wasn't able to do before? He didn't do a lot. Um, now he has to defend. Uh, his ally, Israel, at yes. this particular point. Yes. Beyond the war, um, I think then he, you know, there has to be difficult to see where we'll end up at the end of this mm. phase in the conflict. Mm. But um, what one will hope, for me, coming out of there recently, I don't know if you agree with this, Luciano, but I just felt so strongly that you, the answer won't come from the broken politics within both um, mm. Israel and the Palestinian mm. side of, uh, mm. you know, whether you're talking about Gaza mm. or the occupied territories or whatever. Mm. The answer has to come from pressure mm. outside on the friends. Okay. We're here at the Labour Party conference. Uh, Luciano, you, you left this party partly because of the uh, uh, the conduct of the of the the, the, the Corbyn era leadership on anti-Semitism. You're back in. You're back in now. What should Labour be saying now? There's a good deal of sympathy for the Palestinian cause here in this Labour Party, isn't there? So, it's first of all, just to be very clear, I, I left the Labour Party solely because of the former leadership of the Labour Party because of Jeremy Corbyn and the people around him were, who were found to have breached the Equality Act for the way in which they harassed and intimidated Jewish members. Uh, and this is my uh, first time back in five years and this, comp uh, this conference is completely unrecognisable. There is no comparison between uh, the people and the experience I had here in 2018 and, and five years later today. Uh, this, is a, this, is, this is the party I can call home, it's why I've returned uh, because the party's been brought out of special measures and I think what we've seen to not just today but in the last couple of days yeah. from both Keir Starmer from the Foreign Shadow Secretary mm. David Lammy from many members of the Shadow Cabinet and members of the front bench and just general MPs is a resolute 
position yeah. to say unequivocally yeah. uh, that the Labour Party condemns mm. what has happened. Well, that has happened. Yeah. And, and there are still many here who support the Palestinian cause, some quite, some quite strongly and stridently. I think, Margaret? It's quite, I think it's quite interesting. I mean, I've been in and out. There are very few... Who are, uh, who are daring to express, very, very few who are daring to express the support. And just, I do want to sort of just say, Louise, Luciana was here last time. And do you remember the images of her with the police protection, which yes. was the only way that she could get around conference? Luciana today is here and is being hugged. Um, I've been sitting with her for half an hour, and the number of people who come up and give her hugs and kisses <laughs> is great. So this is a different, different Labour Party. And I think, you know, uh, uh, Keir Starmer, beyond my expectations, moved in the most ruthless, determined and single-minded way. He surprised way. you, Margaret. Yeah, beyond my... I thought this would all take a decade and he'd done it in three years. <laughs> and I would echo that. I think, you know, uh, to his credit... Keir Starmer has shown the leadership necessary to turn this party around. He has exceeded my expectations in, in terms of the speed in which he's done it and his, uh, his, his how resolute he's been in pursuing it. And let's be very clear: there's there's nothing wrong with supporting the Palestinian people. Uh, um, you know, you can support both the Israeli and Palestinian people separately. If you don't condemn what's happened and the barbaric atrocities then we have an issue. Uh, it's either, there's no what about you, there's no what if. If you've got some reason to explain away uh, the torture and killing and murder and hostage taking that we've seen over the course of the past couple of days, then I don't believe you have a place in a Labour Party that supports peace and supports internationalism. Are we going to see you back in Parliament again, Luciana? Um, not anytime soon. Uh, um, I, there's lots of different ways in which I can contribute and I've really enjoyed it over the last few days. I haven't ruled it out in the future, but I'm your mum to two small young children this time kind of got my hands full it's good to talk to both of you Luciana Margaret thank you thank you. take care thank you.